everybody. So today we'll be talking about my plans for the outside decoration of the house and then I will make a second video to discuss plans for the inside. So if you've been following the series you'll know that this kit is called Cadigan Gardens and it's made by the Dolls House Emporium. From research that I've done it looks as though it's a kit which has been discontinued for probably about 10 years now and you can see from this extract from the magazine that the designers had in mind that it was a large Victorian style property based in, in Chelsea in, in London in the UK. So it was probably a house of similar design to this one that they looked at when designing Cadogan Garden. So a large imposing Victorian style property with the nice sort of architrave there, uh, sash windows and the old style Victorian bricks as well. There are some great period property dolls houses out there, but I've decided to set mine in the modern era because it's just not as restricted on design. So, for example, lights. Prior to the 1930s, there was no electricity really in homes, so your lights would have literally just been candles. Um, so, you know, you might have your eye on some nice light shades, and unfortunately, if, you, if you're setting it in that time period, you probably won't be able to use those if you if you want it all you know, within, within keeping to be quite accurate. So it is a good idea to take things like that into consideration on planning um, if you are setting your house in a different time period. So my house build will be set in the modern era, but I do want it to nod to its historical past. So, for example, fireplaces on the inside, I want to think about, I might have a Victorian fireplace in there. Um, and in keeping with this style of house, I think it needs to be a brick build. So as far as I'm aware, I've got four choices when it comes to um, a brick finish. So let's talk bricks. Now, to my knowledge, there are four different ways to put bricks onto a doll's house. Paper. We can look at brick slips, stencils and brick mortar and what are known as Versi brick slips. So I'll just talk you briefly through each one. So the first option is to go with a brick paper. And you can get some really nice papers now, which are a bit, little bit thicker than uh, normal paper. And you can even get some which are embossed, which is this type. So if you flip it over, the actual, um, it's like raised, the bricks are raised on the card. And it just adds a little bit of a 3D effect. They are really nice, but I have decided against that because I do want something with a bit more texture. So these are the brick slips. They're just small pretty much bricks and uh, they just stick on and you can also get the corner ones as well which are like l-shaped and they just go around the corners of your house to make it look like it's a full the full depth of an actual brick um they've got a really nice finish these once you've stuck them on you actually go over with a proper mortar to grout them and i do have these on a tudor house um, and they do look really really good and, and very very realistic you can get them in this type, this sort of red, and you can get them in like a weathered effect as well. They're actually made by a company here in the UK called Richard Stacey. I've had a lot of their things. They're really, really good, really high quality uh, bricks, cobblestones, paving stones. Um, they do all sorts. So if you are in the UK and you want a really nice, realistic finish, I would definitely give them a try. So these are the brick slips. So the third option available to me is actually a brick stencil. So you get the brick powder, mix it with a little bit of water to um, like a cake batter consistency, put the stencil on, put that on um, and obviously you've got like a grey base and then when you take the stencil off you get a really nice uniform look. This is probably the best way if, you, if you're not using paper to get the most uniform look where the spacing in the brick is, is sort of perfect because you'll never get that when you're sticking individual bricks on. So for a long time I really did want to do this. The reason why I decided against it really is because they just go on in one colour and after you have to weather them yourself. I just think that's a little bit tricky to do if you've not really done it before and obviously once you start putting paint on the brickwork that you've painstakingly added on there, if it doesn't turn out you know, how you, how you want it to, you'll probably never be happy. So that sort of put me off a little bit. That, but the main reason that this and the other one put me off is the weight that going for the stencils or the actual brick slips would add to the house. So this house, including basement, when it's all built together, will be approximately 40 kilograms, and that's without any furniture, 
or any you know additions or changes that I want to make to the house so it is going to be very heavy on its own um, and with the Tudor house I, I bricked up all one part of the um, the chimney and it's quite a big chimney but it just it, it does weigh a lot more it does definitely add um, a lot of weight to the structure so that is just something to be aware of if you're doing everything in brick. So these are the Versi brick slips they're actually uh, small individual pieces of card and then they're coated in a real brick finish so i'll get the nice texture and the nice um hopefully the the finish but without the actual weight as much weight on the house so for this um you don't mortar them what you do is you paint the background as you want it and then you just stick these individual bricks on and there are ones the same as the brick slips that you would use for the corner they're just slightly longer and you can just bend them at a 90 degree angle so this is from the gallery, this huge Georgian house of Richard Stacey on their website. And this is actually completely covered in the Versi bricks. So I know it's hard to tell from, from this distance, but it does give a nice um, a nice finish there. Now, there's two types of bricks. These are the just the standard red ones. The other ones that they do are coloured. So they're red on one side and then weathered on the other. And if you pick them up in a random order you'll get um, a nice random brick coloured finish that looks weathered. So I've just pulled this off the Richard Stacey Miniature Masonry. I have to be careful how I say that to get it right. Um, their website, with their permission. And uh, you can see that a bulk pack of a 1,000 brick slips, um, this is actually £19.99 if you're in the UK. Um, I'm not sure abroad if they do ship abroad you will have to just check with them but you can see a thousand covers um, about 160 square inches or a thousand square centimeters which is a meter squared so I think that'll be you know a decent um, you know a decent amount to be going on with I've actually ordered two packs of these as well so I've got 2,000 come in so when it arrives and I can see the pack and we can have a look at the, the bricks in a bit closer detail I'll certainly um, add them to a video as well um, but yeah this is what we'll be using as well as the brickwork on the outside of the house there's also quite a lot of trim so for example on the bay windows there's the um, coin stones that go up the side of the house um, and then we've got to take into consideration door colours, roof material, etc, etc. They are a little bit further down the line in terms of roof material and the door colours. So I haven't thought about that too much. Um, but I have had some thoughts on the trim. So I do want to go with a bit of an off-white trim, similar to how it looks on here. Because I do think it goes really well with the brickwork. Um, but it does look a little bit boring to me just to have the cream and red. So what I've decided on is probably to go with like a nice sage green and use that for some of the trim um, around the bay windows just to just to add a little bit more detail um, and just to make it a little bit more different again rather than just having the red and the cream. So I hope that will look quite nice and that's the plan for the, the outside. Sorry about the grainy appearance of this one. It's uh, only a very, very small image in the uh, in the magazine. So, uh, yeah, it's not a, a great picture. But I just wanted to show you the courtyard of the basement front. Um, I haven't started that pot yet. I haven't even dry built that. Um, but I'm, I'm quite excited about this because I've never really um, worked on a garden or a yard as such for a doll's house. So this is a completely new uh, thing to me and I'm, I'm quite excited now the plans I have for the courtyard um, this has got a really nice you can see there sort of Victorian style table design and I really like that and I'd probably emulate that but I want that at probably the other side so it, it's uh, the kitchen is uh, in front of the bay window and then you can come outside I love that little space there I might put some planters in maybe a little herb garden and then the other side, which is this side where these chairs are, I'd quite like to turn that into some kind of cosy seating area for entertaining with perhaps a chimney or a little fire pit um, or something like that. In terms of design, um, pretty similar to this. I like the stone paving on the pavement area. I like the brick cladding that just all matches the house and ties into it. So we'll probably stick with something quite similar to that. And the last part I just wanted to discuss briefly is this front part. 
So as you're looking straight at it, it's quite an imposing brick wall. And I was I, I didn't know if I liked that at first and if I wanted to keep it. Now, a nice lady called Kathleen has allowed me to show this picture. Um, she's uh, commented on one of the um, forums on Facebook when I'd added a message about the Cadogan Gardens. And she said she'd just acquired this lovely house and she's going to refurbish it. And as you can see on here, somebody, the previous owner, has already made some changes to the basement. So I've had a, a bit of a think um, because I did like the idea of changing that. It would let more light into the basement. Um, you know, it, it, it just allows you to see the front of the house better without having that big block paving at the front. So I did have a little think about that. But I have decided to actually keep the basement as is, but with some small modifications. The reason being is that having thought about it, I actually like the fact that you will have to sort of poke your head round to have a look um, into the courtyard areas. It's like, um, you know, just having a little sneaky look into what's going on um, at the back and, and something that you can't necessarily see straight away from the front. And also with that back wall up, I think it will make the areas um, just a little bit more cosy as well. So I think I will keep that as is. However, I, I'm still not keen on the big block wall at the front, um, right at the front there. So what I might do, taking on board um, seeing that other picture, is actually cut out a hole at the front um, and make that an arch and actually try and put a gate on there because that will then lead straight under that path into the um, front door of the basement area. So theoretically, you could go through that front bit, through a gate and straight into the basement courtyard area. So I think that's what I might do. I think that might just add a little bit of interest on the front there. So I think that's about it for this video. I uh, just wanted to go over the designs I had in my mind and, and what was what was going on. Um, probably is all, I should mention all subject to change I might change my mind along the way but for, for now I've got some ideas so let me know what you think in the comments below um, if you've got any tips on how I do any of this please let me know um, just to let you know as well I, I did give you some misinformation about YouTube earlier on in the videos I said I was a little bit new to this and I did say that if you subscribe it will notify you when I release a video Apparently that's not the case. You need to subscribe and then click the bell notification at the side and that will actually then notify you every time I release a video in the series. So I hope um, you've enjoyed that. Uh, I know it's just been me waffling on. Um, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, the next video I'm planning to go over with my plans for the inside of the house, um, which will probably be a bit longer than this one. <laughs> Until then, take care. Bye.